right, we're over here at this house today. About to turn a modified roof system, a completely flat roof system. One part of the house has like a half on 12, very minimum slope uh, on this main part of the house. But we have our eyes aboard structural rigid foam board that uh, we're gonna create a tapered system with. Got the guys getting set up. This is our Galvaloom mill finish. We uh, hand broke all that or manufactured on uh, bullnose drip edge. See, it's got a one inch lip on it. And that's what the panel is gonna come and lock into. And this is our panel right here that we're gonna install. This is a standing seam roof panel that we manufacture ourselves. We have the uh, roll forming machines, Englert, and uh, we're able to come out to the job and don't matter how long the panel is, if it's 10 foot, 50 foot, 70 foot, we're able to roll form it from as long as it is from the eave to the ridge or whatever the measurement we need, we'll be able to roll form it. Take a look at what we're dealing with. Like I said, this uh, roof has been plagued with problems. It's completely flat. The only other choices that other roofers offer is a modified roof system, which is a completely flat torch down or hot mop or glue down system. We're going to convert this roof where it'll last this homeowner's a lifetime, literally a hundred plus years uh, or more. We're going to take that rigid foam board out there. It's called an ISO board and create a tapered system from the back of the house right here on this roof to wall junction all the way to the eave and allow that water to drain off whereas it's ponding now and uh, posing a major issue. This is probably like the third or fourth modified roof this house has had since it's been built maybe even longer more than that. So we can see this house go from a, a modified low slope roof system to a stand and seam commercial grade metal roof system. So we're sitting there doing the ISO system. You can see where this ISO board system creates a taper. You have these intermediate two inch fillers and then you got a slightly tapered one that goes on top because when you go from the eave of a house and the distance from this eave, which is the edge, the leading roof edge, all the way over to the back of the house, the thickness of the uh, slope has to go because you're going from a quarter on 12 all the way back from this distance is about 21 feet from the eave to the roof to wall junction or abuts the house. So at the highest point, this ISO board is gonna be about six inches, five and a half, six inches. So this roof already has a uh, slight slope to it. So we will not have to put ISO board on this roof. Uh, we do got some damaged decking that's uh, unnailable, unscrewable. You can see D-ply and delamination on this roof right here. See how the, uh, see how the wood just comes apart there. So we wouldn't be able to drive a nail into that, nor actually put a screw into it either. Because over time with the heat, these, this house was probably built in the 1950s, early 60s. The CDX, over time, it's, the glue starts breaking down on it and it starts wanting to delaminate and uh, become extremely weak. That's why we gotta replace some of this wood on this uh, two problems, either water soaked, where water got to it, or the delamination of the uh, plywood. Here's a good, another good look of us installing that ISO system. Good scan of the property of all the stuff we got to replace before we start putting the metal panels down. We're going to dry this roof in with a high temp pill and seal. And this is about midway. And uh, you'll start seeing the panels go down on the next video so we can collage all this stuff together.